good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Resurrection Day. That's what this is all about. Celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Gives us the hope for the resurrection ourselves. And thank you for being here with us today. We welcome each and every one of you. We are glad that you are here. Please feel free to talk to everybody. Just not now. Okay? You can do that later. But anyway, we just like for you to talk with each other. Just to visit with each other. So let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time, please. Thank you, Jesus. That you died on the cross for us to pay the penalty for sin. And nobody made you do it. You did it on your own for us out of love. You were buried in a tomb, giving the opposition the idea that you were defeated. But I thank you that on the third day you came out of the tomb and that you are alive today. And I thank you that we can celebrate this together today. And I ask that you would be with those, our brothers and sisters around the world, who are celebrating this day because of the hope that you give us and what you've done and that who you are. And I pray for those who are celebrating this day, perhaps sitting in a prison somewhere, or simply living out their faith in places that it's not friendly to do so. And I pray for all those that have extravagant celebrations and all those in between, that as brothers and sisters in Christ, that we can celebrate you together today in these different places, but at one time to celebrate you and who you are and what you've done for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's stand, please. We're going to sing the fourth verse. We're going to sing the song, Were You There? We're going to sing the fourth verse today. Were you there when he rose up from the grave? We're just going to sing that verse, verse 4. Were you there? Surely not I, Lord, he replied. 
the one who dipped his hand with me in the bowl, he will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for him if he had not been born. Judas, his betrayer, replied, Surely not I, Rabbi. You have said it, he told him. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take and eat it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. celebrate the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper. It's there to remember who Jesus, what He did for us, the sacrifice that He made. It's not for anything else, but He said it's simply that we will remember. We as humans, we tend to forget, don't we? I mean, I, I tend to forget things. Uh, if I don't write them down, I forget them. And then I forget why I wrote them down sometimes. But this is a way that Jesus said, I want you to remember who I am and what I am going to do for you.
part, this is a two and one cup. Find a part that has a little dimple on it. Y'all found that? A little dimple on the side? That's the first thing that you peel back. It's the one with the dimple. That will be the bread. So peel that back just carefully where the dimple is. A little ray spot. If you were blind, you would know that's bread. Or this is the place you open first. All right, so this, open that, <clears throat> and this represents the body of Jesus Christ. He was put on the cross, and he did die for us on the cross. He was buried, and he was resurrected. So let's have a prayer, and then we'll partake of this. Lord, we thank you so much that you gave everything for us. Help us to remember that, not just now, but each day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So help us to remind you of the body that He gave for us. Okay, now, turn the cup around. On the other side, the little edge will bend up. And pull that back carefully. Careful, I can pull it back. Carefully, and that's the part with the juice. There we go. Alright, you all have that? Is that good? Already? Alright, this represents the blood that Jesus Christ shed for us on the cross. Again, he voluntarily did this. It's made to. But he did it on his own because of his love for us. So let's drink this to remember the blood he shed for us. Okay, now, gentlemen, we're going to come back around and uh, collect the cups if you don't have places to put them in. Okay?
I'd like you to stand, please. We're going to sing the first praise song. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. That's the song we're going to sing all four verses. So sing out this because this is why we're here to celebrate.
And uh, he shared this story with me, I think a little over a year ago. I thought, man, that's really interesting. So um, I guess you could call it an Easter story of sorts. So Lindsay, if you come please and share this story with us. Well, uh, Christ's perfect life, his death on the cross, and his resurrection is the basis for everything that we know as Christians. But, and I want to tell you about a far lesser resurrection story um, that occurred in the winter of 1967. Uh, we, myself and my Four sisters and my mom and dad lived in a parsonage in the club and uh, it was winter, it was cold, and we were having a, a lightning, thunder and lightning rainstorm in the winter. And uh, we had a dog, and the dog's name was Cuddles. And uh, Cuddles had chosen to have puppies the night of this terrible storm. And she did not have her puppies in the doghouse. She went somewhere else where we didn't know where she was and had her puppies. And so Daddy went out looking for them and he heard them. They were under a utility trailer we had parked up against the back of the house. Well, the rain was coming off the house and going under the trailer and she dug a, a hole to have her puppies and they were drowning. So, uh, Daddy came back in and he said that he heard the puppies, he found them, but they were going to all drown unless we got them out from under there. And he was too big to get under the trailer because it was loaded at ground. So, uh, we had a, a meeting on the back porch uh, with all this going on to decide who was going to get the puppies. Um, and I was too little. I couldn't go. I was only five, believe it or not, and I was not big enough, so mom wouldn't let me go. And my next oldest sister, was four years older than me, she didn't want to go. And so my next oldest sister was chosen because my oldest sister was sick, and mom wouldn't let her go out because she was sick. So, and I talked to her this week, and asked her to tell me what she remembered about it. So I've got a verified story. And, uh, and she told me herself she was the most unqualified person to go out and get the puppies of all of everybody. And uh, so mom put daddy's hunting poncho on her, put his hunting rubber boots on her, and daddy and, and she went outside into the darkness and disappeared. Uh, and in my mind, never to return again. But, um, but anyway, she got under the trailer, she got the puppies out, and Dad brought them in the house, and they were cold. They weren't moving. They weren't making any sound. And they looked dead. And in my mind, they were dead. But, um, Daddy decided that he had a treatment that was going to fix them. So Daddy turned the oven on. Do not do this at home. <laughs> Nobody. He turned the oven on, I'm sure a little. And he got Mama's cookie sheet and he put them on the cookie sheet and put them in the oven. And he would pull them out of the oven every little bit and he would rub on them. And then he would put them back in the oven. And we waited. And after a little bit, they started to twitch and they started to move. And their eyes came open. And so, uh, they lived. So, in my mind, they were dead. And he brought them back to life with this warming them up. Now, they weren't really dead. But I believed it. And so that's all that uh, Christ is asking you to do. All right. Thank you.
Thank you. That's what you remember the whole day after we were finished here. You remember his story. <laughs> but isn't that neat? It's a good illustration. You know, and you can spiritualize that whole thing. But anyway, it's a good picture of the resurrection. What Jesus, he, what Jesus was then. But he came back to life. And God brought him back to life. Alright, so now we're going to have a scripture reading. Talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mark 16, 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they could go and anoint him. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb at sunrise. They were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone from the entrance to the tomb for us? Looking up, they noticed that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side. They were alarmed. Don't be alarmed. Don't be afraid, he told them. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they put him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you. They went out and ran through the tomb because trembling and astonishment overwhelmed them. And they said nothing to anyone since they were afraid. hear that story let's stand please we're going to sing crown him with many crowns all four verses because that's who he is today the risen lord the reigning king so let's sing that crown him with many crowns
we're talking about Easter. And some people have different ideas about that. The gentleman, as soon as I can get the quote, Gordon B. Hinckley said it this way, there would be no Christmas if there had not been an Easter. The baby Jesus of Bethlehem would be but another baby without the redeeming Christ of Gethsemane and Calvary and the triumphant fact of the resurrection. So without Easter, no Christmas. Now, you think about Christmas. Y'all get those Christmas cards every year, right? Mary, Joseph, baby, shepherds, wise men, lambs, roosters. Uh, you know, you just never know what's on a Christmas card. But you think about that, in that, and you get the Christmas card, you go, isn't that nice? A little baby. Don't y'all do that when you see babies? Some of y'all say, I don't want to hold that. I don't want to hold that baby. No, no, I can't hold that baby. But the thing is, you got all those images of Christmas. But then Easter, you have the image of a, image of a man beaten, torn, nailed through his hands and his feet to a cross, to a wooden cross. Now, Easter's escaped that glitter and hype of Christmas. It's more difficult to celebrate a crucifixion. And it's more difficult to believe that the dead came back to life. It's not easy for some of these people. Now, Easter, it's more of a shock story. You know, this guy who lived last three years of his life, he went around teaching, he went around preaching, he went around doing 